natin yun. If we are going to uh, check the transfer at the non-composite section, okay, you have the, uh, the girder here, bridge girder, with the additional of pretension, uh, pre-stressing strands. So because of the self-weight of the member, it will create compression stress at the top, tension stress at the bottom. Uh, remember, this is the neutral axis. This is the location of the neutral axis. So aside from the self-weight, you are going to add the press stress. Because of the press stressing, this will require or this will add up compressive stress at the top compressive stress at the bottom due to the simple uh, stress of uh, brought about by the press stressing. And then with the addition of press stress tendons, it will create tension at the top, compression at the bottom. So adding all those stresses, it will create a temporary condition wherein there should be tension at the top, compression at the bottom. But take note that according to the standard, the tension at the top should be less than 0.0948 square root of Fc prime i. Remember, we are not using the conventional value for the compressive strength of concrete here. Instead, we are using a higher, higher or high strength concrete member for this particular non-composite section. So that is at transfer stage. Second stage is at the depth pour stage. When you say depth pour stage, meaning we are now pouring concrete at the deck, but still this is considered as a non-composite section. So this is the concrete deck we poured at the top of the at the top of the girder which have been pre-stressed. So with the use of the temporary condition, going back from the temporary condition that we have here, aside from that temporary condition wherein you have tension at the top, compression at the bottom, you are now going to add the stress because of the added or the poor depth. So the slab dead load will provide compressive stress at the top, tensive stress at the bottom. So therefore, at the deck pour with the non-composite section, you will have compression stress at the top, compression stress at the bottom. The last stage, which is at service. So meaning, you are now using service dead load and live load. So there is application already of the service loads. So at the deck port, you are now using the deck port with the applied, applied stresses. Now we will have at service under dead and live loads, we will have a composite section already. So meaning this entire system will act, or this entire section, I mean, will act as one unit. So the, with the composite section, we will have compression at the top, compression also at the bottom. That is because of the dead load plus all the other additional dead load due to uh, superimposed loads that we have. Plus, we are going to add the stress okay, from the live load. Okay, you have compression at the top, tension at the bottom, and then this will yield to a value of service load stresses, wherein you have compression stress at the top, tension stress at the bottom and take note that based on the standard how do you check whether you have a safe design or not the tension at the bottom should be less than 0.19 square root of f c prime so that's how you uh, illustrate the concrete flexural stress distribution at section near mid span if you have the different stages. Okay.